What's up everyone? Thank you for returning to our channel. We are going to share with you today a story that is both riveting and heartbreaking, and it dives into the depths of betrayal that can occur inside a family. The concept of betrayal is one that has a profound impact, particularly when it originates from the people we trust the most, our loved ones. The terrible case of the Sumner family in which the links of love and trust were shattered in the most inconceivable way will be the subject of today's narrative. Prepare yourself for a narrative that not only reveals the details of a terrible crime, but also investigates the catastrophic effects that betrayal can have on even the most intimate of love connections. Prior to delving into the specifics of the Sumner family case, let us take a moment to comprehend the significance of betrayal within the context of the dynamics of familial relationships. The bonds that unite families are frequently thought to be unbreakable because they are constructed on a foundation of trust, love, and a common collective history. On the other hand, when betrayal enters this sacred area, it can have a significant impact, leaving scars that may never fully heal. We will see how the betrayal of trust takes an unthinkable toll on the lives of individuals involved in the Sumner family case, which will challenge our notion of love and the depths to which some people may go in order to inflict suffering on their own relatives. Therefore, fasten your seatbelts because you are about to experience a narrative that delves into the most shady aspects of family connections and the repercussions of treachery that are passed down from generation to generation. Criminal detectives with years of experience have been left rattled to their very core as a result of the frightening drama that is the Sumner family case. Despite the fact that even the most seasoned criminalists are prompted to ponder the depths of human depravity, the horrible crime that is at the center of this narrative is one that goes beyond the borders of savagery. Be prepared to witness a degree of malevolence that goes beyond the usual as we go deeper into the facts of this horrible story. This level of malevolence will leave scars on the hearts and minds of those who have devoted their life to solving crimes of this nature. In addition to the atrocity, the legal aftermath develops as the offenders continue to fight to appeal their fate, despite the fact that they are facing the possibility of being sentenced to death. This creates a chapter in the history of criminal justice that is both intriguing and heartbreaking. In order to have a complete understanding of the tragedy that befell the Sumner family, it is necessary to first get familiar with the basis of their previously joyful existence. A love story that began as simple schoolyard loves and developed into a profound and enduring connection was recounted by James and Carol, who were childhood sweethearts from Charleston, South Carolina. Their relationship, which began in 1959 when they were both in high school, developed into a connection that endured the ups and downs of life. As their friendship developed into something more, they started making preparations for a future together that would involve them. The turbulent events that occurred in the 1960s, such as James's military duty and an unexpected separation, quickly shattered their hopes of living a life together that was filled with happiness and would last for a meaningful amount of time. In spite of this, the couple's tenacity and dedication to one another laid the groundwork for a reunion that, unbeknownst to them, would turn out to be a defining point in their sad story. We invite you to join us as we delve into the idyllic beginnings of James and Carol's love story, which laid the groundwork for the turbulent events that would ultimately take place. As the decade of the 1960s progressed, the Sumner family was confronted with a number of difficulties that would put their loving relationship to the test. James, a high school lover while also a veteran of the Vietnam War, received a call to military service, which marked the beginning of a prolonged separation between the two of them. In addition to causing him to sustain grave injuries, the conflict also resulted in him being incorrectly counted among the dead, which prevented Carol from learning that he had survived. In the meantime, Carol, 
who was resolute despite the fact that she was struggling with uncertainty, finished her education and joined the Charleston Air Force Base in order to maintain her employment. Her life took a terrible turn when she engaged into a second marriage that was fraught with difficulties. As a result of her husband's aggressive behavior, the marriage came to a sudden end, leaving her with emotional scars and prompting her to seek solace in the company of her daughter called Rhonda. In 1987, Carol's life was once again flipped upside down when her ex-husband, who was under the influence of alcohol, turned a revolver on her. This event irrevocably altered the course of Carol's life. Despite the fact that she survived the attack, she suffered a loss of vision in one eye, went through a number of medical issues that threatened her life, and carried the burden of a horrific history into the decades that followed. When we fast forward to the turn of the millennium, we find that it was fate that brought James and Carol back together in a manner that was quite remarkable. Carol was working as an operator at a contact center in the fall of the year 2000 when she heard a voice that she recognized. The voice was a familiar one. This voice reverberated through the phone lines, rekindling a flame that had been quenched for many years because of some circumstances. It came as a complete surprise to discover that James, who had been thought to have perished in the perils of war, was still alive and in favorable health. Through the emotional phone call that eventually transformed into a face-to-face -face meeting, two souls that had been divided by time and circumstance were brought together that had been separated by both of these factors. They were ultimately reunited after a separation that lasted for 38 years, and the reunion was nothing short of a love story that was rekindled. Carol decided to embark on a journey in order to win back the affection of the person she had loved while she was in high school. This was due to the fact that she was no longer the young beauty she had been in the past. After going through a turbulent period of five months, the pair came to the conclusion that they would reaffirm their devotion to one another by getting married. They experienced a resurgence of their love. The couple's life together started a new chapter that was filled with love, joy, and the promise of a happy future when Carol moved into James's house in the Riverland Terrace area. This particular chapter was filled with the promise of a bright future. They were entirely oblivious to the notion that the shadows of their shared history would put a melancholy pallor over their newly discovered pleasure. They were uninformed of this truth. In the tranquil location where the Sumners sought comfort, a shadow that had been cast by the Cole family, who were a nuisance to the neighborhood, loomed menacingly large. The shadow was caused by the Cole family, which was to blame. Stephen Cole, a veteran of the Vietnam War who was confined to a wheelchair, Natalie Cole, who was known to be missing on a regular basis, and their daughter Tiffany Cole lived next door to the Sumners. Tiffany, the young daughter who was caught in the crossfire of the strife that was occurring inside the Cole family, received assistance from Carol, who is known for her loving attitude. This assistance was offered to Tiffany despite the fact that the Cole family was experiencing apparent troubles. Carol not only offered Tiffany a sympathetic ear, but she also offered a sense of familial warmth which was something that Tiffany had been longing for for a very long time. Carol was in a position to provide Tiffany with both of these things. Within the midst of the upheaval that was Tiffany's own life, Carol emerged as a guiding light of support for Tiffany. In 2004, the Sumners made a choice that seemed to be insignificant, but it turned out to be a decision that would change the course of their life fundamentally. They came to the conclusion that it would be best to sell their Chevrolet Lumina minivan, and in a turn of events that was utterly unexpected, Tiffany Cole expressed her desire to acquire the automobile. Tiffany was successful in persuading the Sumners to sell the automobile to them on a payment plan that would be paid in installments. This action was taken out of compassion, and it is possible that they were unaware of the impending sense of doom that was approaching. 
Despite its apparent insignificance, this transaction created the framework for a chain of events that would finally culminate in a calamity that is beyond the comprehension of any individual. On the other side, the Sumners were completely unaware that this act of kindness would turn out to be a crucial moment in the continuation of a disturbing story, one that would raise worries about the tranquility of their lives. The Sumners, who were dealing with the challenges of advanced age and deteriorating health, made a decision that would change the course of their lives when they decided to travel to the state of Florida, which is known for its warm weather, in the hope of finding a solution to their deteriorating health. The couple, who are now retired, took the decision to make a big modification as a result of the recommendations that were provided by the physicians. With the purpose of constructing a future that is characterized by peacefulness and physical proximity to the beach, they purchased new real estate in Jacksonville, Florida, after selling their cherished home in Charleston. This was done with the intention of establishing a future that involves the beach. This monumental transfer also resulted in the purchasing of a brand new Lincoln Town automobile, which served as a symbol of the promise of a new beginning and the realization of their ideal life together. This promise symbolized the realization of their ideal life together. However, for the Sumners, the pages of their existence evolved into a chapter that was characterized by mystery and anguish. And as a consequence, the ideal goals that they had made took a sad turn as a result of this. In the summer of 2005, Carol and her daughter Rhonda abruptly stopped speaking with each other in the rhythm that had seemed so natural to them. This was a significant change for both of them. When Rhonda attempted to get in touch with her mother and stepfather, she was confronted with a gloomy silence. This included phones that were not functioning properly, calls that were not answered, and an eerie void on the other end of the line. Her worries became far more intense as a result of this. As a result of the unsettling silence, Rhonda decided to embark on a journey, and she drove for a number of hours in order to get at the residence of the Sumners. In the moment when Rhonda arrived, she was met with a distressing scene, which caused her heart to start thumping quite hard. Initially, there was a warning that was sparked by the absence of the family automobile, a door that was slightly ajar, and evidence of disarray within the house. All of these factors contributed to the initial alert. There was food that had not been consumed, which indicated that the dinner had been abandoned, and there was an atmosphere that was filled with abandonment. The table was set for two people, and there was food that had not been eaten. During the period of time in which Rhonda's frantic calls for her mother and James reverberated throughout the tranquil house, the unsettling reality made its way into the light. Following the revelation of this truth, the investigators would eventually find themselves on a journey that was characterized by gloom and melancholy. As the investigation into the disappearance of the Sumner family progressed, a web of deception began to emerge, showing the nefarious deeds of imposters who had taken the identities of the couple who had been unaware of their disappearance. After deciding that they would take advantage of the financial opportunities that would be presented by the Sumner's money, the thieves went on a rampage of fraudulent actions. As part of their bold acts, they made calls to banks, pretending to be James and Carol Sumner and expressing their dissatisfaction with their restricted cards and requesting access to their purported savings. A sequence of questionable transactions and dishonest maneuvers led to the unraveling of this horrific hoax, which in turn shed light on the nefarious powers that were at work. The authorities immediately took action after being made aware of the possible connection between the imposters and the couple who had gone missing from Sumner. It was the finding of the abandoned Sumner automobile on a remote road that offered detectives with a critical clue that led them deeper into the heart of a horrible crime. The calls that the imposters made to banks 
in an effort to withdraw money from the accounts of the Sumners further increased the urgency of the investigation, so laying the groundwork for a scary confrontation with individuals who were responsible for the disappearance of the pair for reasons that are impossible to explain. An immediate and decisive action was taken by law enforcement in order to apprehend the individuals responsible for this dark and twisted story. As a result of the long arm of law, Tiffany Cole and her accomplices, Michael Jackson and Alan Lindell, were hauled into custody, putting an abrupt end to their ambitious expedition. During the course of the interrogations, Horrific information regarding the heinous act that had been committed on the Sumner family was revealed. Bruce Kent Nixon, an additional participant in this horrific scenario, was also caught and included into the chilling narrative. He was brought into the story. The shroud of secrecy that had been surrounding the crime was lifted as the interrogations advanced, revealing a truth that was horrible. A woman named Tiffany, who had previously been the receiver of Carol's generosity, was now being accused of being the mastermind behind a plot that resulted in the kidnapping and savage murder of an elderly couple. A horrible picture was created by the Confessions, which described a night that was plagued by horror, torture, and eventually the unthinkable act of burying James and Carol Sumner alive. The findings caused shockwaves to travel throughout the community, and they left the detectives unable to come to terms with the tremendous degree of malevolence that had taken place within the area that appeared to be benign. The narrative of the Sumner family case takes a dark turn when the veil is removed on the grisly details of the horrifying crime that was methodically planned and heartbreakingly carried out. Tiffany Cole, Michael Jackson, Alan Lindell, and Bruce Kent Nixon, the individuals who committed the crime, were driven by avarice and greed, and they collaborated to take advantage of the wealth that they believed the Sumners owned. It was with deliberate precision that the night of evil got underway. It was Tiffany, armed with the intimate knowledge she had gathered from her seemingly benign meetings with the Sumners, who played a pivotal part in the planning and execution of the violent crime. Under the appearance of requesting aid, Bruce and Alan, the nefarious envoys of this nefarious plot, knocked on the door of the Sumners in the middle of the night. What transpired within the confines of the Sumner mansion was incomprehensible to human beings. Carol and James, an elderly couple, were subjected to a nightmare ordeal in which they were not only shackled, but also blindfolded and tortured by their attackers who were looking for information about their financial situation. As the hours went by, the lives of the Sumners took a terrifying turn for the worse. Their assailants cruelly buried them alive in a shallow grave in the middle of a barren forest. They were led there by the culprits, the horrifying events that transpired that evening are reflected in the frantic cries of the Sumner couple, who in the midst of their suffering, reaffirmed their love for one another. Their calls for mercy were ignored, and the criminals cruelly covered them with earth, thereby ensuring that they would meet a tragic end in a gruesome act of brutality that shattered the very roots of human decency. As the legal processes progressed, the reverberations of the tragedy that had befallen the Sumner family could be heard echoing within the walls of the courtroom. Bruce Kent Nixon, who may have been overcome with a sense of regret, cooperated with the authorities and provided essential information that exposed the nefarious plan and the terrible manner in which it was carried out for the first time. Tiffany Cole, Michael Jackson, and Alan Lindell, on the other hand, made a different decision and opted to remain silent or make pathetic attempts to deny the allegations. The trial, which was distinguished by the eerie testimony of Bruce and the indisputable evidence gathered by investigators, turned out to be a stage for the administration of justice. The defense methods that Tiffany, Michael, and Allen had devised fell apart when confronted with an overwhelming amount of evidence demonstrating their guilt. The jury, 
unimpressed by attempts to transfer responsibility or reduce involvement, came to a verdict that was commensurate with the gravity of the offense. Following the conclusion of the trial, Tiffany Cole, Michael Jackson, and Alan Lindell were all found guilty and sentenced to death. This verdict appropriately reflected the awful nature of the atrocities that they had committed. Because of his cooperation with the authorities, Bruce Kent Nixon was given a sentence of life in prison without the chance of release on his behalf. It is impossible for the verdict of the court to truly alleviate the great sadness and misery that was inflicted upon the Sumner family and a community that was left struggling with the darkness that had soiled their lives, despite the fact that it does provide a sense of closure about the situation. In the shadowy aftermath of the Sumner family case, the wheels of justice turned decisively, delivering a terrible reckoning for the offenders who had callously ended the lives of James and Carol Sumner. This was a momentous day. Tiffany Cole, Michael Jackson, and Alan Lindell were all sentenced to the most severe punishment that society could impose on them, death. They were forced to confront the consequences of their acts. Despite the fact that he was spared the same fate, Bruce Kent Nixon came to the realization that he would spend the rest of his life in prison, his role in the horrible crime leaving him permanently marked. As the doors of the courtroom closed on this horrible chapter, the community and the members of the family who had survived were left to deal with the wounds that were caused by deception, cruelty, and the incomprehensible loss that had occurred. A deliberate act of malevolence that defied all sense of humanity was committed against the Sumners, who had sought happiness in their final years. As a result, they became catastrophic victims of this act. Thank you for watching. I recommend our other crime videos.